Hey y'all, Ileana Solar Dragon. We're back with another part of Let's Play Star Stable. So you may be wondering, what in the world is this outfit? This is... what's up? Alright then. This is the birthday outfit. Uh, let's see if I can get a close-up. The hat, which honestly is pretty cool, pretty detailed. The dress, which I honestly, I do like the dress. I love this dress. The, oops, the pants, which cut off, yep, you can see here. And the boots, which also look pretty cool. Um, oh, and the gloves. There is a sweater that I'll show y'all after. This is the saddle, the saddle pad. No, I can't get, where is it? can't really see the boots but those are the leggings boots whatever they're called and the saddlebag this was nope come on this is the pet that comes with birthday fun code oh I almost forgot this is the bridal <laughs> um and I didn't get the sweater but there's a sweater that's dark green and says happy birthday on it. Anyway, let's get back to talk to Eric. No, 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 where's the wallet? That's right, cell phone. I mustn't forget to bring it with me. Ileana, can't talk right now. I have to catch a ferry. What happened? Madison is gone. She disappeared when she and Jonas were in Fort Penta yesterday. I'm sorry I didn't take you more seriously, Ileana. Sorry. But now I have to try and find Madison. I hope nothing's happened to her. She should have known better than to run away from Jonas like that. When I find her, I'll make sure she's grounded until she's 35. You want to help me look for Madison, you say, Eliana? Thanks, I appreciate it. But we'll have to talk about this. But we will talk about, talk more about this later. I have to leave now. I'll go ahead and we can meet up later at the mall. See you there. Okay. Um, I don't feel like waiting for a ferry, so let's just take the trailer. Yeah, the shillings for it. <clears throat> nope. Fort Pinta. Okay. Over here now. To the mall. After the conductor has checked your ticket, you find an empty seat and sit down. You see how the environment outside the window changes you get closer to your destination. Suddenly the speakers start crackling and you hear the happy voice of the conductor. Yorick City Mall. Madison? Madison! Where on earth is that child? Madison! Madison! Eliana, where do you think Madison could have gone? Jonas said he last saw Madison sitting at the bus stop when the bus to the mall arrived. When he checked again to see where Madison was, she was gone, so she must have taken the bus here. But where could she have gone then? Would you say you have any idea of who may have seen Madison? The janitor there? He doesn't look like he's in the best mood. I think we should probably not disturb him. I see. Well, you know him, so that changes everything. Let's go talk to him. Ugh, people have no manners these days. I hope you haven't come here just because James sent you about something. Because right now I need to clean up this mess. As you can see, Eliana, I have a lot to do. But tell me what I can do for you. Today. Is that my balloon? I'm sorry to disturb you, but you haven't seen my daughter by any chance. Your daughter? Do I look like a babysitter? I have a job to do here, you know. See this mess? There's soda all over the floor. This kind of stuff I have to clean up. All because young people do they have no manners. I'll give you an example. I just finished cleaning the floor when a small girl with big headphones came rushing in. She didn't wipe her shoes off and she wanted to help find she wanted help to find a bus. Not even saying thank you, she rushed off and spilled a lot of soda. Large headphones? Did she have brown hair and a pink dress? Hm, you bet she did. I hope she didn't spill soda on you as well, but now I must clean this up. 
That must have been Madison. Do you know which bus she took? I don't have time to check which buses the kids get on. Not when I have so much to clean up. Ileana, what should we do? It must have been Madison that the janitor saw. If you help the janitor clean up, maybe he would be in a better mood. Is this my balloon? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm in this. Huh? Have you already cleaned everything up? Yes, yes. I'll help you find your friend, Eliana. The girl you're looking for went to Idine's Plaza. If you hurry, you might catch the next bus. And it leaves from right outside here. Thank you so much for your help. Come on, Eliana. We should get going right now. Hey, Balloon, don't follow him. The bus to Irene's Plaza. <clears throat> Over here now. Okay, the janitor said Madison came here. Where should we start looking? Of course, she could be anywhere in the city. Ileana, please say that you think she's alright. Why would she run away? She would definitely not be getting any Saturday candy for the next five years. Do you mean you have an idea of where we can start looking for Madison, Ileana? Did you say you can recognize the cafe over there? Yes, you're right, of course. It's the coffee shop you showed me in the Yorbit Gazette. Seems like a good place to start looking, hopefully. Maybe someone there has seen her. Come on, let's go there. I will go this way. Oh, there's Madison Gmo. Oh, there's Soul Riders. What's this? Isn't it Madison's Gmo? This must be Madison's Gmo. We better show it to Eric. Of course. Isn't this Madison's Gmo? Where did you find it, Ileana? Did you say it's near here? The Madison can't be far away at all. Madison! 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 Dad! Over here! Dad, Dad, in here, please help me. Daddy, Ileana, please help me. Madison, what are you doing in there? Come out from there, now. I was going to say night dust, but when I got to the square, I saw that stupid man's friend who was in the newspaper too. I don't care what you're doing in the car, it's not yours. So get out of there now, otherwise you'll be grounded for a long time. I can't. I crawled into the trunk because that's what they always do on TV. I was going to follow Night Dust Kidnapper so I could save him. But somehow the trunk was deadlocked and now I can't get out. Please help me. I can't get out and it's so dark in here. Take it easy. We'll get you out. We'll have to go and find the owner. Did you see where he went before you broke into the trunk, Madison? No! You can't talk to him because he's a horse napper. You found evidence to prove it when he went into the cafe. He's a horse napper. Eliana, I know you believe me. The stupid man who kidnapped Night Dust, his friend is inside the coffee shop. He mustn't find out we're on to him and Night Dust swear about. Madison, we'll get into all that later. Eliana, we have to try to get Madison out now. Feels like the cover's on very tight. I don't think I can get it open. Did you say you want to try?
No luck for you either. What are we gonna do, Eliana? We have to get Madison out of the trunk. Eliana, I don't like that Madison has broken into a stranger's car at all, and normally it would be best to try to find the owner and apologize. Don't you think we should do that? Madison's wild imagination of a horse snapper is hardly believable. Or, how did I miss that? There's a risk he might try to sue us for unlawful entry into his car. Libel, this is bad. This is really bad. What should I do? Nope, the best thing is probably just to walk in and hope for the best. Apologize? Then I'm gonna make Madison apologize. I thought I should have to live in a Brussels sprouts pudding and fish balls for the rest of the year. Liliana, do you have an idea? Will you enter the coffee shop and distract the car owner while I try to open the trunk? Okay, I don't know if I like this idea, Liliana, but I'm counting on you. I'll try to get Madison out while you keep the owner of the car in the cafe busy. Hey, over here. <coughs> hey, you. Yes, you. Where's my ice cream? I've been waiting for ages. You recognize the man in front of you. It's Carl. It must be Carl's car that Madison has broken into. This is not good. You look very familiar. What's your name? What does it matter? Do you work here or what? You must do. I've been waiting for ice cream for a really long time now. I have to confess that the service today is the worst I've seen in a long time. A duck could serve me faster than you. What are you standing there for? Off you go. I'm a customer and the customer is always right. Not you. So make me an ice cream I'll make sure your boss finds out what a bad job you're doing. The best thing you can do is to keep Carl there is to make him an ice cream. He'd better improvise. Okay, in the top right picture, you'll see what kind of ice cream your customer wants. You make the ice cream by clicking on the right carton of ice cream in front of you. If it goes wrong, you can always throw the ice cream out and start again by clicking the trash can. Good luck! Okay, so green, green... Can I get out of this? No, I can't. So, green... And then red. He eats it. Even though you're a lazy worker, you sure know how to make ice cream. What did you say your name was anyway? Or maybe you didn't say? You look very familiar, as if we've really met before. You don't work for Mr. Onward, do you? You say you don't have a clue. There's something fishy about you. I'm like an elephant when it comes to memory. I always remember a face, and I know that you and I have met before. I don't remember where we met before. But until then, you might as well start off doing some good. After all, you're just standing there like a fool. Come on, you must have lots of work to do. Uh-oh. Ileana, it's really not working. I've tried, but the truck must have been deadlocked. It's impossible to open. We'll never be able to get Madison out without a key. Ileana, I think it's best if we just talk to him. Did you say his name was Carl? Why are we whispering? Do you have any idea how to get Madison out of Carl's car? Do you mean we need a soda for it? If you go get a soda, I can pay for it. If you could distract Carl, maybe you can get a hold of his car keys to save Madison. But the first step is to get some soda. Okay, so we have soda. Sorry, Eliana, but I don't understand how the soda is going to help us get Madison out of the car. I get it. The soda will help us distract Carl and buy us more time. I don't know if it'll work, but I'm counting on you, Ileana. I'll go and give Carl the soda. If you can get Eric to spill the soda all over Carl. Let's see. Well, that's gonna work. Uh oh. Oh no, I'm so sorry that wasn't meant to happen. I really don't know what happened there. Sorry, I just lost my footing. I apologize to Eric when Madison is safe. I'm so sorry, I really don't know what happened. Fool! Do you work here too or what? Everyone at this place is hopeless. Like the girl who took ages to get me my ice cream. I'm so sorry, we wanted to buy you a soda. Now you have the chance to pinch Carl's car key so we can help get Madison out of the trunk.
Ileana, what's going on? Please tell me you can help me get out of here. Did you say you have a set of keys, Ileana? What are you waiting for? Please help me get out of here. I have to show you what I found. Is the lock stuck? No, it can't be, Ileana. Please don't give up. What's that, Ileana? It probably won't be long before Carl comes out to the car. You don't have much time. Madison has to get out now. Wait a minute. Why would you bring me a soda? Oh, the soda? Didn't you want a soda? I never ordered a soda. Um, uh, maybe I got it wrong then. <clears throat> Wait, there's something fishy going on. That girl you were here with, what is her name? Do you mean Ileana? Ileana. Of course I remember that girl. <laughs> Butter who? Where is that girl? The one who was with you. She was here only a moment ago. Um... Out of the way! Are you sure you don't want to stay here a little while longer? Get out of my sight! Oh, someone doesn't look happy. I'm free. Thank you, Ileana. You have no idea how happy I am. <sighs> Thank heavens you got me out. Here comes that stupid man. What are you two brats doing on my car? I hope you haven't touched it. Away with you. Scram. Ileana, get out of here. We have nothing to do with each other. Madison, how are you? Are you feeling okay? Ileana, you managed to get Madison out. Thank you, Ileana, for all your help, and now Madison and I must go home. No, I won't. I won't go home until I save Night Dust. Madison, pay attention. We're going home, and that's it. You can bet that you'll be grounded for many years to come. Do you know how worried I've been? You know how worried your grandfather has been? He was beside himself when he came home before Pinta and you were gone. Sorry, I am sorry, but, but, no buts, we're going home now. But you're not listening. That stupid man has my horse. He had the transmitters in his cart, even that stupid briefcase. I swear that if you open, you'll, open it, you'll find everything we need to know. Madison, what briefcase? Don't tell me you took a briefcase. This briefcase, it was in the stupid man's car, along with the transmitters. I thought we needed some kind of evidence. Liliana, I can't open it. Can you try? If you manage to open it, we can find out where Night Dust and the other horses are. Wait a minute. You can't just open someone else's briefcase. How else will we find out where Night Dust is? Madison, enough. We're not going to open that briefcase, and we need to try to get a hold of Carl and apologize and return the briefcase instead. I'm not going to apologize. Stop arguing now, Madison. Carl doesn't have your horse. He's probably an ordinary businessman. Nope. Not chewing the slightest. Ileana, thank you again for all your help today. But it's been a long day, and I think both Madison and I need rest. I'm going to try to find a hotel where we can check in. Madison and I won't be able to leave here before we're given a briefcase back. We must do the right thing. Will you help us find Carl? Thank you, Ileana. I appreciate it. I'll be in touch when we're ready to continue looking. Until then, take care. See you soon. Make sure you get some rest now, but before you go, take this as a thank you for all your help with finding Madison today. Whew. This is the shirt. <clears throat> I have no idea how long I've been recording. But it feels too short to end it, so... What in the world... Alright, so what should we do now? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. I want to devote an entire um episode to a Tokens Tour, so not that yet. Hmm. 
<laughs> we can continue looking for clues. Let's go back to the Silverglade Manor. All right. I don't know why, but Crystal is always, it feels like he's the slowest of my horses. Da -da 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 -da, Silver Glade. Let's go talk to Linda. off. Help me read these books. I think we might have found something here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. Um, I forgot how much reading this was. It was the year of our Lord, 1218, sometime in October. It was foggy, and it was a foggy and cold winter morning. Yon Yarrow's ships had been in dire straits for weeks. There was hardly any fresh food or water. Food or fresh water left on board, and the starving crew was already half dead, but they did not dare stand up to their Yarrow. John was convinced he would find uncharted land out here in the ocean. Gotcha. God had shown them this in his increasingly recurring visions. Was John going crazy? Or would he prove once and for all he was right? The crew was loyal and would follow him anywhere, even if it meant death. The same moment the first mate was about to jump overboard to end his suffering, something happened. The fog suddenly cleared before the ship, too, and revealed rising cliffs above the water. Land ahoy! Land ahoy! Land in sight! Please let it be more than just a barren rock. Turned out Jean was right, again. The occupants in the first ship unfortunately never found out as the sharp rocks, though later be referred to as the thorn rocks. Tore at the bottom of the ship, all men were lost. Yarl's ship and the rest of the fleet made a sharp turn when they knew the fate of the first ship. They landed instead at a calmer beach, quite a bit further down the coast, south of the thorn rocks. It was on that beach that John decided to set his armored foot and dis first set his armor foot, and despite his emancipated body, he climbed up a fifty-foot cliff, which would later be the site of their first fort, and he shouted into the night, I am Jan Jarl, son of Jor. This land is now my land, and I name it Jorvik, and I shall defend it with my life as long as I live, and with my soul after I am dead. Thunder boomed down from the mountains. If John and his crew had not been so relieved at their landing, they might have noticed the sound of was not thunder, but a huge horde of wild York horses, frightened by his shouting. Their new land would turn out richer than they could ever have imagined, and filled with such dangers that would put your most fearsome nightmares to shame. Excerpt from Nick Stonegrange Travelogue, 1989, Volume 12. I was very impressed by the giant statue that had been erected here. The old fort is watched over by the epic statue of Governor, Ga Governor Gareth. He defended Yorvik against the pirates with only a cannonball and a boat hook. With that as bravery, Yorvik would have been lost to the foreign powers and would not be a free nation it is today. Hence the statue. The location was a natural choice when Yon Jarl landed in 1218 and built Yorvik's first fort. Governor Gareth had modernized the old fort in the 1600, using cutting edge defense construction techniques. Gareth was proud of the fact that his ancestors had traveled with Columbus on this famous transatlantic voyage in, 12 in 1492, and therefore named the fort after the famous sister ship of the Santa Maria. During the extensive renovations, Gareth is said to have found a number of very interesting artifacts in the walls of the fort. Legend has it that Gareth still watches over a very unique artifact himself from beyond his final resting place. The artifact apparently has something to do with the sun. Someday I will find the time to investigate these stories more thoroughly. Someday, oh. 
But today, I have an exciting church room to visit. But this has been fascinating, I must admit. Yeah, I'm trying to read the last one. Yon Jarl's funeral was held on a bleak fall day of the year 1263. For 45 years, John wreaked havoc on Jorvik and never left the island from the day he first claimed the island as his own. He fought hard for many years, but was viewed as a fair and popular ruler who tried hard to unite as many small kingdoms that emerged in the island. Anyone who stood against John would face a very dangerous enemy. Well, everyone knows of his exploits in the history of the books explains it well. The funeral was attended by many guests representing nearly all the clans of Jorvik. One clan in particular was the Silver Clan of John's descendants, who still make their home in Silverglade today. Even the local druids, who had a good relationship with Jan Jarl, attended the service. The funeral lasted three days and was followed by a month of official mourning and peace on Jorvik. The actual burial was in a tomb not far from the Thorn Rocks where one of his ships sunk to the bottom after they discovered Jorvik. From there, he would, could forever watch over his mighty castle and rising in the south. The great tomb consisted of several rooms, and a portal to each room was sealed with a magical rune stone that could be opened with a special magical key. A sun key, a moon key, a lightning key, and a star key. These magical druid seals were acquired skills which are now long forgotten. I don't get it, do you? If you think you know where to look, off you go and see if you can find it. Actually, I do. Remember how Gareth said he was still protecting something of the sun? And how Yon Jarl's tomb was protected was protected by a key naming a sun key. Know where I'm looking? Let's go back to Fort Pinta. You press hard in the nameplate and it opens with a click and reveals a secret compartment that contains... something. Do I go back to Linda? Nope, I go straight to the tomb. Okay, back to the tomb. Okay, over down here. There's something down there. A blue light appears in the tune's mysterious well. You feel the presence of something or someone. I am Jan Jarl, son of your eternal guardian and protector of Yorick, whether I'm dead or alive. Who dares open the first portal of my final resting place? Ileana. <laughs> I've never heard of you, but I understand many years have passed since I was brought to my eternal resting place, and now faces and new faces have appeared since then. Maybe I can help you, but first I must know who you really are and your true intentions. So you want a fragment of Idine's light? I can give it to you if you convince me you are worthy and that your heart is in the right place. 
If I am satisfied with your answers, I will seriously consider giving you a fragment of Idine's light. Who do you represent? The Keepers of Idine. Keepers of Idine had a leader who I guess was their most important representative until this day. Who is it? Frep. If I give you what you came for, then, in my principle, you'll be acting in my name. Therefore, I must be sure you know who I am. Which year did I land on Jorvik? Well, this was Columbus. This year hasn't passed yet. What was my father's name? Is it my greatest wish to protect and serve Jorvik and Idine? Will you do everything in your power to serve the keepers of Idine? <laughs> uh, I've always wanted to pick this one, but I won't. <laughs> Honorable Ileana, I understand now that you are a true servant to the keepers of Idine. I'm no servant. I will grant you your wish and give you the fragment since your intentions seem to be important and you act on behalf of the druids. My interests are the same as the druids. Be aware that the power of the fragment has not been activated, but the druids know how it needs to be done. I have rested for nearly 800 years, and until now I have not awoken from my final rest. I don't see yet the need to take part in this final battle to protect Jorvik on Judgment Day. Ideen hasn't called for me yet. Farewell, Ileana. I return now to my final resting press place until the moment I am called again. Eh, uh, say so a frip, by the way. Huh, I wonder then. Since the general theory is that we're the reincarnation of Ideen, I wonder if a, if a story point will be that we have to come down here, unlock the final couple chambers, and call for him to resurrect and, you know, fight with us fight Garnock, which I assume is everything that's happening. And now I go to Elizabeth. I don't want to ride all the way over there. Oh, looks like I'm taking another trailer. You know what? This is quicker. Call for pickup. Okay. After this, I think, um think we'll be done because it is getting a little bit late. Da, 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 no, come on. Fail deal. Okay. Here we go. What an adventure you've been on. You spoke with yon ghost and you got the fragment. I had heard the stories, but never imagined they were true. Can you believe that yon remains our protector even after his death? That's good to know things really go bad one day. But now we need to figure out how to activate the fragment so you can use it. As you've proven you possess special gills, I think you can recharge and activate this fragment. Borrow my rune stick, ride up to the rune stones in the hill over my house, and place the fragment in front of the sunstone. You can charge it by activating the stone with the stick. Come back to me when you're done. I'm sure it'll work. The sun's life-giving light will give the fragment the properties we need now. This is the sun... Come on, place it. Now you wave the wand. Oh, hi, puppy. You see, Eliana, Aiden's mystical powers have apparently taken power of you. The fragment seems charged and ready to go. Before you head off and expose yourself to danger in Scarecrow Hill, I think you should test that it works first. Do a test here and show me that it works. I will see how powerful the light is and can determine whether it is enough. 
Okay, so you have to press this to activate it. Cool. Not yet. Okay. Wow, it is so bright. Very strong. But a light that shines that bright burns out much faster. Unfortunately, I don't think it'll last very long, but it will be powerful. That I promise. The side effects may be dangerous, though. Well, Ileana, all that remains is the hope that the light will protect you against the magic that has chained the Scarecrow to the border between our world and the Unreal world. The bad news is that the charged fragment will only last for a minute or so, I think, so you can't activate it until you're at the gate to the Scarecrow Hill. That should give you enough time to get up to the tree on top of the hill and take the apple, if there is one, that is. Be on your guard. When forces like these are unleashed, they can untract vicious saddle creatures. Creatures. There's no smoke without fire and no light without shadows. The stronger the light, the sharper the shadow. Let's hope that you're lucky and avoid that. Be careful. Good luck now. Don't forget to activate the fragment when you're at the gate Scarecrow Hill. If you get hold of the apple, ride to Alex who's still waiting for you at the North Iron Gate. <laughs> okay, so let's go over to the hill. It's going to be a little bit longer than I expected, but hey, this is exciting. And Jasper's pumpkin farm. Oh. Yeah? <laughs> What's the puppy doing? Okay, over to Jasper's. Not, nope, over to Scarecrow Hill. That's where I'm going. <laughs> Okay, come on, Crystal. You can do it. Eh, let's take the shortcut. Okay, ready everyone? Let's hurry. Turn to smoke, turn to smoke. And there it is, the golden apple. You found the golden apple, just when the power of the fragment ran out. You'd better get the apple and hurry out of here, right over to Alex at the North Iron Gate. You pick the apple and something terrible happens. What's that? A group of flying shadow witches. Probably sent here to stop you. They materialize in the shadow of the fragment's strong light. They intend to take the apple from you. Ride away from them and don't stop until you reach Alex at the North Iron Gate. Don't let them catch you with their magical sleep bombs. Did, did I grab the apple? I hope I did. Oh, this is the Halloween race. I remember this vividly. Aw, oh, come on. Did I take this? Please tell me I took it. Yes, I have it. Okay. We're doing this in a perfect time for Halloween. <laughs> Oops. I went the wrong way. Oh, come on! Oh, this is going to annoy me. I can already feel it.
Come on, Crystal. You can do it. Probably a good thing. I don't know. Okay, I did not get hit by that one. Ooh, four tries and counting. Four tries and counting. You escaped the witches. Ride to Alex by the North Iron Gate. Finally. Jeez, um, that took way too long. Eliana, Crystal Warrior, you look so upset. What happened? And what's that? A golden apple? You and your wonderful Crystal Warrior are true heroes. That's gonna have to- Oh, come on, I didn't know that was- mm -hmm. Fine. That's gonna have to be it for today. Um, thank y'all so much for watching. I'll try to record tomorrow. See y'all later. Bye!